we are going to create this awesome looking animation using a few different techniques that some of you probably never used. We are going to create a particle system and use that particle system to guide our mesh to break into pieces. Then we create an animated vertex weight mass to drive our simulation. After all that, we are going to render this using two different cameras and finally composite it inside Blender. I know, we got a lot to cover. So without any further nonsense, let's head over to the tutorial. To get started, create a plane. Since we are going to use cloth simulation, we need to subdivide this. Go to edit mode and right click subdivide. Make it 10 times. Now, I am also going to add a subdivisions modifier for some extra resolution. Use a simple method and we can keep this at one. Now I'm going to create a particle system. This particle system will decide the scale of our pieces along with our subdivision modifier. Set frame start and end to one so that all the particles will appear in the first frame and set the lifetime to something bigger than the length of the animation. Let's set our animation end frame to 150. Now you can see our particles start to drop as soon as the animation starts. I only need these particles as a guide for our pieces. I don't want it to do anything else. So in the physics section of the particle system, set physics type to none. We don't want it to render either. Let's set the viewport display to point just for now. So we can see what we are doing. Play with these distribution settings to get random spread of particles. Make sure to tick use modifier stack. That's important because otherwise this won't use any modifiers before the particle system. And we need our subdivision modifier to affect the particle system. Now it's spreading all over the plane, but I want it to only appear where our logo is. For that, go to texture section and create a new texture. I call it density. Hit this button and go to properties and make sure you have image or movie selected as texture type. Now import your logo. Make sure it's a white logo on a black background. Set the texture mapping to UV. And the main thing here is in the influence, untick this general time and tick the density. Now you can see our particles appear in the shape of our logo. If you're not seeing any differences, go to edit mode and come back to object mode. It will refresh the particle system and probably fix any issues. Now we have our guiding particles. Let's use this to break our plane into pieces. In the modifier step, add an explode modifier. Go to wireframe mode and check this cut edges option. Now you can see it did something for our plane. What it did was it used our guiding particle system to break the mesh into pieces. Let's increase the particle count and subdivisions. Now I set the viewport display of the particles to none. You can see the effect explode modifier created if you increase the particle count and subdivisions, but it is not that necessary for us right now. We are ready to make our simulation. Go to the physics tab and add a cloth sink. We don't need much steps. I'm going to decrease the mass a little bit. Now, if I hit play, you can see all of our pieces start to fall down. That's not what we want. We want a mass that pins everything except our logo. And that logo needs to be revealed slowly or gradually. To create a mass at an empty sphere, we scale it up to fully cover the mesh plane. Now I go to frame 95. Pick the number depending on your animation. Disable the cloth sim for now. Create a location keyframe for the empty and go to the first frame and move it away from the plane and add a keyframe. In the timeline, select both keyframes and hit T and set the interpolation to linear or Bezier. Now we have our mask animated, but we need a vertex group to pin the cloth scene. So how are we going to use this mask to make that animating vertex group? For that, we are going to use a vertex weight proximity modifier. Just wondering how many of you have used this modifier before? Okay, it doesn't matter. Place it before the cloth scene modifier because we need the vertex group to calculate before the cloth scene. For this to work, 
First, we need to make a vertex group. Go to mesh data and create a new vertex group. Let's call it pin. Go to edit mode and select all the vertices and assign them. Now in the modifiers tab, select that vertex group. Let's go to the weight paint mode to see this clearly. Select our mask empty as the target object. Choose the proximity mode to geometry. Now what this does is it uses the origin point of our empty and makes a gradient based on this lowest and highest values. Since we didn't animate our empty's scale, the distance to our empty's edge is around 1.5 meter. We can use that for our highest and lowest value. You can play with these numbers and this follow to get different results. Here in the influence menu, we can select our logo texture we created earlier. This will take that logo to the vertex proximity calculation. Set the texture coordinates to UV. Now enable the cloth scene and go back to the first break. Go to the physics tab in the cloth scene settings under shape, select our pin vertex group. What this does is it pins all the red areas of our vertex group and release all the blue areas for cloth scene. We don't need any collisions either. Now, if I play the animation, it's working. Now all we have to do is play with the particle number, subdivision levels and cloth settings to get our desired look. To make the pieces go up, you can set the gravity to negative number. I also add a wind force field to direct our pieces to a side. For wind strength, use some big numbers and also add a little noise to it. Since we are doing a simulation, to see this effect clearly, I am going to bake the animation. In the cache setting, enable this cache. Set the frame start and end and give a cache name. Make sure to save your file. This will make a folder in the path where you save your blend file and store cache data in there. Hit bake. Now you have a smooth, faster playback. Then I add another play to be our bottom layer and position it slightly below our top layer. Since our top layer is not big enough, we probably see the edges when we hit render. So I go to edit mode and extrude the outside edges. This will change our mesh data and will mess up our baked cloth scene. So delete the previous bake and bake it again. Now we have our logo animation. Let's add cameras, lights and materials and make this awesome. I picked a frame, navigate the viewport for a better view and add a camera. Let's call it camera 1 because we are going to use more than one camera today. Now hit Ctrl Alt Numpad 0 to align the camera to the view. Now I adjust the position and the rotation of the camera. Instead of animating the camera to follow our logo reveal, in the constraint tab, I add a child of constraint to the camera and select our mask empty as the target and hit set inverse. This will make the camera act like our empty's child and follow its movements. Now I can set this value to 1 and get a better idea of what's going to render. I kept adjusting the camera until I found a look that satisfied me. Let's add another camera to the scene. If you are using more than one camera, to switch between those cameras you need to bind them to the timeline first. For that I select my first camera and while hovering the cursor over the timeline, I hit Ctrl B. This will bind the camera to that current frame. Now I go to the frame where I need my second camera to be. Add a new camera, rename it. Now while selecting our camera, hit Ctrl B in the timeline and bind the second camera to that frame. Now if you look at the triangle shape in the camera, you can see it fills up when that camera becomes the active one. Let's frame the second camera as well. Now you can see the camera switching in the camera view pretty well. I changed my animation to 120 frames. Now I animate the second camera to slowly zoom in to the logo a little bit. Set the interpolation to Bezier. I kept adjusting the cameras again a little bit. Now in the graph editor I speed up the beginning of the animation of the second camera. 
let's create materials and lights. Go to EV and set the background color to full black. Now, I add a sunlight, angle it to light the simulation from back and add an area light to act like a fill light. For the shading of our top layer, use a noise texture with a big scale and use it to make a subtle variation in color. Here I picked a very dark blue color. Plug the texture for the roughness as well and use a color ramp to adjust it. Add an input jump denote and use the back facing output to make the back side of the top layer a different color. Here I pick a little brighter blue color. Adjust the lamp settings a bit. For the bottom layer, I use an image texture to create a simple material. We are almost ready for the render. Let's add another empty to use as our focus point. In the camera settings, enable depth of field and select our focus object. Use a child of constraint to our focus object as well. Now it moves with the camera. For the second camera, I use another focus object, but this time I animate it. It starts from close to the camera and ends at our logo. This way, I can shift the focus to reveal the logo. Let's add another light close to the camera. Pieces which are closer to the camera will catch this light and will look awesome when it out of focus. So let's go ahead and hit that render button. Oh, wait, enable motion blur and render again. Now in the compositing workspace, oh, we need a bloom pass. Check the bloom pass and render again. Thank God that this is real time rendering. Okay, now in the compositing, use the bloom pass with an exposure node to increase its effect. Add it to upper render. Use RGB curves to adjust the colors a little bit. I know there's a viewport compositing branch out there, but until it becomes suitable for actual projects, let's do compositing this way. You can take these passes to some other software to do this, this stage of the process if you want to, or you can import those passes back into Blender and, you know, keep everything inside the house. Add a lens distortion for some distortion and dispersion and use an ellipse mask with a blur node for some vignette and use a box mask to add black bars. Since we have two different shots, these settings could look awful in the other shot. So for that, I go to the frame just before the camera switch and make keyframes for some of these values. Adjust them and add a keyframe on the camera switching frame. This is definitely not the perfect way to do compositing, but it's fine. So what do you think about today's video? Is it too fast, too slow? Comment down below. And also, if you make something using these techniques, don't forget to tag LFX. I love to see those, especially when we have a big month coming out. So as usual, all the tutorial files and demo projects file will be available on Patreon. If you like to support the channel, that is the best way to do so. So I hope you learned something cool, something new. I mean, that's what we like to do. We not only create stuff, we let you create with us. Hit the like button, comment your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe to HellFX Learn so you won't miss out when the next video drops. So until next time.